Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. So this is the lecture of uh, drug induced skin disorders. So we will look at uh, several types of uh, drug induced skin disorders including the medication or drugs that can cause the this skin di disorders. So um Approximately 2 to 3% of hospitalized patients actually experiencing uh, the adverse drug reaction. So, um, and also this uh, accounts for 30% of all reported uh, adverse drug reaction. So the diagnosis requires a comprehensive drug history taking for us in order for us to establish the relationship between the skin disorders and the most likely causative drug. So we have to take an accurate drug history, uh, including the OTC use, any herbal or homeopathic preparation use or any injections, and record the, the both, both of the generic and brand name of the medication. And also ask if, uh, if the patient had any history of drug sensitivity. Um, and also a certain when the eruption started in relation to drug use. So we have to know the timing or the, um, the duration between the start of the drug taking and also the start of the uh, eruption of skin, any skin uh, presentation. So these are the types of uh, drug induced skin disorders. The first one is the, the ISD causing changes to skin function, for example, photosensitivity or pigmentary changes. The second is the mild DISD, for example, exanthem, pruritis, urticaria, fixed drug eruption, and acne form eruption. And the third one is the more severe form of uh, skin reaction. We call it SCAR reaction, which is the, stands for severe cutaneous adverse drug reaction. So it can be divided into two, erythema multiform, or the Steven Johnson syndrome slash uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis. So for the photosensitivity, it can be induced by, the, uh, by certain type of drug. So this drug, it will increase the sensitivity of the skin to the sunlight. So the UV length uh, of sunlight, which is uh, 250 to 400 nanometers, are able to interact with the certain drugs in the skin, and it can provoke any uh, an, a photosensitivity reaction. So now, photosensitivity can be divided into phototoxic or photoallergic. So um, uh, it's the same as uh, any type of allergic reaction. It is... Um, related to immunologic reaction, where else for phototoxic is non, uh, not related to any pharma, uh, any immunologic reaction. And this is, this is the most common type of photosensitivity. Uh, and uh, it is dose dependent. So the, uh, the more the patient taking the, the drug, so there is a more increased risk to get this phototoxic. And it resembles severe sunburn, can progress to blistering, and offset within 5 to 15 hours of taking, it will, and it will subside quickly. Uh, where else in a photoallergic, it is less common, it involves uh, immunologic reaction, it is usually eczematous, but maybe urticaria, bolus, or purpuric. Urticaria means um, it's itchy, so bolus means there is a, a, a blister. And uh, purpuric um, means that there is a, a, a red patches. Okay, so they are not dose dependent, and it occurs following exposure to normal amounts of uh, sunlight exposure. So it is not dose dependent. So whichever dose that the patient is taking, they are susceptible to get um, sunburn uh, because uh, if it's uh, an immunologic reaction. So the onset can be delayed and also be, uh, while the recovery ca uh, can be slow following with drug withdrawal. These are the 
uh, clinical and histological features of both phototoxicity reaction and also photoallergic reactions. So you can have a look at the differences between these two types of photosensitivity. <clears throat> so you can see here the differences between the phototoxic and photoallergic reaction. On the left one is a uh, is phototoxicity reaction to phenothiazine so you can see it is it looks like a severe sunburn where else on the photoallergic reaction the patient might have uh, some patches uh, red patches and the skin can have like a, a blister the bolus and it can be very itchy so these are the this is the example of photoallergic reaction to oral sulfonamide so this is the example of drugs that can cause photo, uh, photosensitivity reaction. So you can see here uh, the topical NSAIDs, um, amiodaron, NSAIDs, clopromazine, tetracycline. Okay. <clears throat> so the how to manage uh, or prevent photosensitivity reaction. Of course, if you want to prevent photosensitivity reaction. Of course, we want to avoid strong sunlight and we can suggest the patient to use topical, uh, topical sunscreen and it has to have both protection of uh, UVA and UVB. For UVA, you, ha you can check for the PA++, plus plus sun, whether it's 2 plus or 3 plus. Whereas for the SPF, we have uh, certain, uh, certain types of SPF so it can be like uh, 15 or 30 so the degree uh, is uh, the degree of uh, protection against the sun or, or the uvb depends on the numbers of the spf and also oral prednisone at one milligram per kg per day tapered over three weeks so this is for the uh, urticarial um, reaction which requires um, a steroid to reduce the inflammation and the second so we come to the second group of uh, drug induced skin disorders which is the drug induced enzymatome so it can the pre clinical presentation is uh, erythematous uh, which means that the, the patient might have a red, redness of the skin uh, it can also be um, mobiliform which is resembling measles or macula papula which is a mixture of flat and raised areas of the skin the example of drug uh, implicated with this reaction is antibiotics <clears throat> for example sulfonamide ampicillin acinazide or phenytoin uh, or carbamazepine which are the group of which which are the group of uh, anticonvulsant and anti-malaria so it can begin within seven days of commencing the drug and the mechanism can be a delayed uh, hypersensitivity reaction so it includes um, or it involves the immunologic reaction as well <clears throat> the second type is urticaria or angioedema or we call it hive so it urticaria uh, means itchiness so it, it is red and it is very itchy angioedema is um, <clears throat> it means that there is a deep soft tissue swelling the example of drug that can cause this reaction is NSAID or, or opioids. <clears throat> and it can, um, so drug induced urticaria or angioedema can be cutaneous manifestation of uh, anaphylaxis. So it needs uh, urgent medical attention. So, so some cases it can lead to anaphylactic shock. So for the fixed uh, drug eruption, so the patient uh, might have one or more patches of uh, red spots and uh, when she or he take the offending drug the second time, the eruption may occur at the same spot. And it is erythematous, which is uh, red and it is sharply bordered and darker than surrounding unaffected skin. And when the patient is resolved from the reaction, the marks will be will stay there and it will become a, a darker color as compared to uh, other skin. And it takes between two to twenty four hours to develop this uh, following following the drug ingestion. 
So it might start with one eruption and then it can multiply and it is more common at the, at the face and genitalia and starts with a red color and then change to dark red and then um, as I mentioned before it will uh, stay as a hyperpigmented mark even though the, the eruption or the reaction has already resolved. So these are the drugs that can cause this type of reaction. So the next one is a acne form eruption. So it can be caused by corticosteroids, cyclosporine, or contraception, which is the progesterone on lip pills. Uh, it can be one or more inflammatory patches. Uh, also take two to twenty four hours to develop. Uh, on the mostly on the face area. So you can manage with oral tetracycline antibiotics or atromycin. So these are the examples of the drug that can cause acne. And the next one, uh, this is, uh, now we come to the scar. <clears throat> so remember that the three uh, main type of uh, drugs, uh, drug induced skin disorders. The first is the photosensitivity. The second is the uh, exanthem. And the third one are the scar reactions. It can, uh, and it can be uh, divided into erythema multiform or Steven Johnson and uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis. So for the erythema multiform, it is more like a, a target like lesion. So there is one, one or more uh, lesion. Uh, it can be, uh, it is characterized by concentric uh, red and pale rings and in severe cases, it can cause a central blistering. So there is a blister. Um, <clears throat> there is a central blister and then the, the, the surrounding area will be red and uh, inflamed and it typically occurs on the limbs rather than the trunk. Present within two weeks of the start of the drug and you can manage with paracetamol or topical steroid and appropriate topical therapy. So these are the drugs that can cause erythema multiform. Aripirinol, barbiturates, uh, carbamazepine, cimetidine. And uh, now we come to the next, um, the second example of scar reaction. So this is Steven Johnson syndrome on the left side. And uh, it is a, a serious reaction. It is idiosyncratic. So it means that, um, it means that the, um, the reaction is not, cannot be explained by the uh, expected pharmacological action of that drug. So it's not related to the mechanism of action of the drug. So it can uh, it can be occurred uh, it can occur uh, on the epidermal area but it can also occur um, in any uh, skin any any in any areas of the skin so not only the epidermal or mucous membrane so it has high mortality rate actually so as I mentioned before uh, SJS and 10 is life threatening um, events and it can be characterized by blistering and epidermal sloughing, which is a skin peeling. So the patient might have fever first, fever, malaise, and upper respiratory tract uh, symptoms. And uh, the difference between Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis is only the coverage of a body surface area um, that the blistering or the reaction occurs. So for the SGS, only a small areas of uh, skin peeling occurs, which is less than 10% of the body surface area. Where else for 10, it consists of more than 30% of the body surface area. And for the uh, a patient who have uh, in between that, which is 10 to 30%, we call it SGS slash 10. So 10 uh, carries a mortality rate of approximately 30% of the patient. But uh, for patients with uh, comorbidities, the mortality rate can go up to 90%. So it's very serious and life-threatening uh, event. So these are the drugs that can cause Steven Johnson syndrome and uh, 10. So particularly allopurinol, um, carbamazepine, uh, which, which is the, one of the anticonvulsants, and other anticonvulsants that can cause it like phenytoin okay, and amotrigine. Uh, and other 
other drugs, uh, for example, uh, penicillin and uh, what else? Um, yeah, the group of penicillin, like Bactrim, might also cause a uh, drug, uh, may also cause Steven Johnson syndrome. So, okay, like I mentioned before, most are commonly associated with aropurinol, phenytoin, and carbamazepine. So, for uh, anti epileptic drugs, um, this reaction can occur within three months of initiation. Okay, and 99% of the scar reaction occurred within the first uh, eight weeks of drug administration. So the um, if the patient was given um, either phenytoin or carbamazepine, so they need to be monitored within the three months whether they develop this uh, skin reaction. If they uh, they do not develop it more uh, within that three months, so they are considered uh, not having a a risk to get this uh, SJS or 10. So the laboratory findings consistent with the diagnosis of SJS 10 include uh, increased WBC, uh, elevated liver function, elevated glucose level, um, elevated um, renal function parameters, proteinuria. So that means um, the patient is currently having um, having a, a stress level, high stress level, and uh, the renal function can also be impaired as a complication uh, of this uh, skin reaction. And also elevation of ESR and CRP um, uh, it denotes the inflammation, inflammation of the, uh, in the patient. So the complication that might occur is infection, uh, Erythrolyte imbalances it can also lead to um, eye uh, eyes uh, disorders like corneal abrasion or photophobia, skin or nail scarring, and acute renal failure. So the principle of management is to discontinue the offending agent, give supportive treatment like fluid balance, uh, nutritional support, pain management, and gentle skin care. So the skin, um, the supportive therapy is uh, more or less the same with patients with uh, burn. So we have to make sure that the patient have uh, full hydration and uh, also manage the pain. Gentle skin care, careful attention to tumor regulation. So we have to make sure the, uh, the, the, the temperature of the patient is, is good and appropriate care for the mucous membrane, especially for the eye and the lid, uh, systemic steroid, cyclosporin, or intravenous uh, immunoglobulin to reduce the uh, auto, autoimmune, um, autoimmune uh, reaction and to reduce the inflammation. And we also want to treat infection if it occurs. So that is all for drug-induced skin disorders. So remember, we have uh, three main types of drug-induced skin disorders. Uh, the first, we have photosensitivity. The second is a um, milder form of uh, skin reaction. And the third one is the severe cutaneous adverse reaction, uh, which includes Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. So the most important uh, thing in the management is to remove uh, and identify and remove the offending agent and um, uh, manage the, the patient according to the uh, complication and also use a supportive uh, therapy uh, for the patient to reduce the, the symptom and also reduce the risk of complication. Okay, uh, thank you very much.